thing. Um, All right, everybody. We are back with another episode of Wealth of the Culture, man. It is your host, Ollie Brady. And today, this is going to be a dope episode, man. I, I ain't never had nobody on. You know, I've had a lot of real estate people on, people that's in the real estate game. But I've never had anybody on that talks about the hard money lending side. They didn't even really know how you even get exposed to this uh, avenue or this niche per se of real estate. So I got a lot of questions. Uh, you know, y'all know I've done private money lending before, but I I don't know how to I don't know how to get into this. I got my guy Rod. I'm a, you know, first off, man, appreciate you for coming on, man. Appreciate you for coming, give this game to the platform, man. I appreciate you, man. Just want to say that, man. Likewise, likewise, brother. Thank you for sharing your platform with me. Shout out to everybody that's here viewing. Um, I appreciate your support. And first thing I like to do, though, with every guest that come on, man, people that's not familiar with you, people that may not know what you got going on, just give them a little bit of your background, what you do, all of that. All right, so I'll start from the bottom. I'm, uh, my name is Rod Stanback, like Ali said. Um, I'm an investor, hard slash lender. Um, I started out, real estate investing is my first love, which is how I found hard money. But I'm from Philly, I'm from North Philadelphia. Um, you know, like a lot of, you know, black, same you know, story, like a lot of black people growing up in the inner city, you know what I mean? Um, been through, I've been through a lot. And, um, you know, um, my journey was, I, I had a rough journey, honestly, you know, I come from the projects, but, you know, I always was determined. I went to college, you know, too, I got kicked out, you know, but um, uh, it was in the restaurant industry where I got kicked out and I was actually there for like three years. And it was like one of the roughest times of my life. You know, honestly, it was stressful. It's, a, it's, it's rough working in that kitchen, in the restaurants, you know what I mean? But I wouldn't change anything because that's what motivated me to strive for more. You know what I mean? I just couldn't stay in that environment. You know, I mean, I, it's not what I envisioned for my life. So, and when I was there, you know, I had a, you know, had a, a thought and I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't what I envisioned for my life. So I got to do something. At the time, you know, real estate was, was hot. This was around, you know, prior to 2008 and stuff. So um, I went to school for carpentry. Um, I couldn't buy, I didn't have enough money to buy a house at the time. So I wanted to get aligned within the industry. So I wanted to learn a trade, learn carpentry. And I started subcontracting for Home Depot doing doors and windows. And then I was doing that. But again, I wanted to get into real estate investing. So my brother, he had a best friend and they were, they had a construction company. And again, I'm from Philly. So we was taking warehouses and convert them into student housing. And, you know, I did that for like a year and that really prepared me for my real estate investing career. So by the time, you know, market crashed in 2008 and prior to that, people knew that I was looking to get into real estate. So when the market crashed, whatever, somebody came to me, they said they had two properties for sale uh, for $10,000. So uh, that's a no brainer, you know what I mean? I jumped right on that. I gave him the money, he gave me the deed, it was a title. Um, so I went ahead and renovated one property uh, fixed it up, put it on the market. It was uh, under contract in two weeks, um, which is uh, I mean unheard of, and especially a down market, which it was during that time. So um, they asked me for the HUD one. For those of you who don't know, a HUD one is simply a settlement statement. It shows you all the expenses that are incurred during a real estate transaction. So at the time, I didn't know what they were talking about. So they like, you know, where's your HUD? I'm like, who? You know, so um, they asked me how I acquired the property. I told them. And they immediately referred me to a lawyer. So I explained to the lawyer how I acquired the property and he told me that the property was stolen. And what I had to do was a quiet title process. A quiet title process is when you have to rightfully, you have to search for the rightful owner. So we had to send certified mail to either the owner or their relatives. And you gotta put out an ad in the paper for three weeks straight. You know, just trying to find that person. If they, if they want the property, then they got it. If they want, you know, a certain price, then you have to pay that or they, they get to keep the house. So nobody, you know, responded to the three attempts and I was luckily able to keep that one. Um, the second one, it wasn't so lucky, but um, it was still reasonable. So this person had heirs The both other actual owners were deceased, but this, this person had heirs, um, two kids, they had moved to Oakland from Philly. They were completely done with the property, you know, didn't expect anything from it. So they just said, give me $3,000. You know, at the time, this was when the property was like in shambles. So they didn't think it was about worth much. They didn't know I put a little bit of money into it, the value increased. Okay. So I cut the check and um, did that. And here I am, you know, for, but that experience, because I was at risk of losing those two properties, I had to either get out of the business or 
educate myself. So, you know, I got a mentor. I started reading every book, uh, every webinar and programs and stuff and um, got a mentor. He was, a, he taught me real estate and stuff, but then he was also a hard money lender. So that intrigued me of his model, you know, because he was a hard, he was a real estate investor that turned into a, hard, a real estate educator, was uh, mentoring people, but then he also had the hard money. So he called it the circle of wealth, you know what I mean? He, giving people sure. funding and teaching them how to invest at the same time. So I was inspired by that model and that's how I became a hard money. Man, that's crazy. First off, that's crazy. You got two properties for 10 grand. <laughs> wild. I mean, I get it was way back then, but still, that's still wild. And you said you was in uh, carpentry and all that, right? So you was, yeah. so you was kind of just doing, you was already familiar, I guess, with like renovating homes and everything like that. Yeah, that was the one advantage I had. You know what I mean? I was familiar with the process now. I wasn't necessarily familiar with the cost, though. So my first project, I overpaid, even though I got it dirt cheap, you know, so it didn't it, it didn't matter too much, but I overpaid for the rehab because the contractor milked me. I was paying them about a week, and you know how that can go, you know. So I overpaid, sure. but it was all good. Okay. Now, I want to I want to kind of dive into, well, first off, this is my question. I mean, you pr maybe, maybe not. Did you come from like an entrepreneurial background? Was like money a topic in your house coming up? Like any of that? No, not at all. My mother was a lunch lady at for the public school system in Philadelphia, and my dad drove the, the bus. Not the, not the school bus, but the bus for the Philadelphia public transportation system. So they never had, they never owned any businesses. Business was never a hot topic. My brothers, you know, my, well, I have two brothers. They, one of them had, they had businesses, but no, no, they were, they got their businesses after I was an adult. So I didn't have anybody to sure. show me a blueprint. I don't come from money or anything like that. Okay, it's bad out the mud. It's all good shit. That's what most people say. Most of us, that's how we got to start. You just go and you figure it out. And that's why I think it's a dope way that you got into real estate. Cause it was like, your first deal was something that was just like a, I mean, most people I talk to, their first deal is a complete like headache type deal. They don't, it ain't nothing smooth selling type situation so i'm just that that's intriguing like were you before you got into the hard money uh lending far as like real estate goes were you thinking like were you just flipping homes like what was your pro like what was your path during like before you got into hard money lending i was strictly flipping houses that's all i was doing flipping houses you know what i mean prior to me getting into hard money lending um Renting wasn't a top priority of mine. Honestly, at the time, I didn't even understand the, the value of renting to me because I was like, man, I don't want to hold for that little rental income. I want the lump sums. Um, but although I did, I still own to this day those the first two properties that I uh, told you that I initially bought. You know, I still own those to this day. Um, but most properties uh, up until that point, I was just uh, selling. Okay. All right. Now, how was you funding the, funding everything as far as rehabs go? Like, I'm trying to figure, like, how was you funding it? Was you just doing it yourself or what? Yeah, so I was doing it myself uh, because, the, again, at the time when I had 09, 08, 09, 08, the market was flat. Nobody was lending, especially to a first-time investor. That was too risky, you know what I mean? So it actually took me a year to rehab that first property. I was, you know, scrambling, doing what I had to do to get up the money to fix it up. So it was a process. Okay. Now you mentioned that you had got a mentor, like what, what made you want to go down that route? Because I know a lot of people when they coming up, especially us that ain't got no money. I don't know if your mentor, like you paid him or whatever, but a lot of people, we ain't got no money. We, we ain't trying to spend our last on a mentor. We're trying to, you know, run a play or something like that. So what was your thought process behind going and getting you a mentor? Um, honestly, you know, I had a little extra money at the time because I was doing some other things, you know what I mean? So that's how I was able to afford it. But as far as the mentor, me finding this mentor and actually moving forward with it, um, it was by it was by like chance. So it was a website at the time called Freedom Soft. Um, that was the software I was using for, I was like wholesaling and that's what I was finding deals at as well. And the guy had an affiliate program and I just happened to stumble across him on his links and it let me down the funnel. And you know what I mean? At the time I didn't know about funnels. So um, then it, yeah. I ended up purchasing the course. Okay. Now for those people out there that's contemplating doing the, uh, you know, cause nowadays we got YouTube, Google, people got the courses, people actually had the mentorships. Uh, do you think that's like a route that people should look into taking? 
personally, or do you think it might be a better better route to go with? No, I mean, definitely get help. Get help. Do not try to do it on your own you know, when you're first starting out because it might seem like you might look at, let's say a mentor is going to charge you. Let's say he charged you a thousand bucks or whatever, even ten thousand dollars. That is, it is a hefty fee, right? But you got to do your research on that person to make sure they are who they say they are, and that they've done that 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 they've done what they say that they are doing and have done. You know what I mean? Because the problem now, and man, Ali, man, you was just discussing that. It's too many people out here that are claiming to be experts and gurus, and they didn't put the work in. You know what I mean? A lot mm -hmm. of people have to get the cab. They can sit and watch a YouTube video and then go absorb it and then go and regurgitate all that information like they're the expert. And they ain't so, done none of it, yep. Yeah, so do your homework on anybody that you consider doing business with. Even me. Don't take what I'm saying on this interview. You know, do your homework and check me out. You know what I mean? I encourage you to. Um, but yeah, so that help is crucial, y'all. It'll help you. Like I said, even if somebody charged you $10,000, that could potentially save you hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know what I mean? You just don't know until you get in the middle of a project and you know what I mean? You scram around like, damn, I wish I would have listened to that guy that was on Ali's podcast. You know what I mean? He told me to get a mentor. He, and I'm not just saying, cause I'm not, you know what I mean? I, my, my thing is hard money. I'm not a real estate investing coach. I can because I'm thoroughly experiencing that, but that's not my focus. So I'm not just saying this so you can, come get a uh, coaching from me or whatever. That's not my, you know, my motivation. But, you know, like I said, it's just crucial to do things right the first time and learn from everybody else's mistakes. You know what I mean? If you just happen to make a mistake, learn from it so you don't repeat it. But you smart ways to learn from everybody else's. Okay. Now, let's get into this hard. Well, first of all, let me just say that about vetting people because you hit some real, real crucial on that. Like, yeah, I, I don't care... I speak on this a lot. Like I ain't telling nobody to go out here and, you know, go pick my brain a person to death, but you definitely, like you mentioned vetting them and going and doing your own research. I definitely recommend everybody do that because I mean, I've come across people that's uh, scammers. Uh, you've come across people that scammers as we was talking about earlier. I don't, we ain't got to get into that, but right. you know, definitely I will say that a lot of this could all be avoided if you just go do a little bit of digging. It ain't all. It ain't. It ain't. It don't take much. You're gonna be able to find out real quick if somebody about what they about, or if they are not. You can talk. You can have a conversation with them a couple of times, and you'll know. Trust me, because after a while, they can't. It ain't nothing that they can just recite that they don't learn real quick. It's gonna be some stuff that you know they got to have some real knowledge on, or they have to experience it to have that knowledge. So definitely, people don't take that lightly, because if you're looking for a mentor, it's a cost. There's a cost of uh, some form. If somebody gonna do it for free, I mean, I know a person that does uh, stuff for free. He legit, but not everybody want to do that for free. And if you're gonna, you know, you're gonna invest in yourself, take it serious. You know, you put money up to better yourself, then go do all your due diligence on what you're doing. Like you wouldn't go buy no stock without doing no research on it. You wouldn't go buy a property without, you know, checking everything out, making sure it's legit. So do the same thing with your mentors, man, because that's going to be the determining factor if you're going to be successful or not. But one more add to that, Alex, before you go ahead, like, if nobody else is going to invest their time or energy into you if they don't see that you're investing into yourself. You know what I mean? So it's a 50-50 thing. You got to meet people halfway. Because just getting a mentor, that's not the answer either. You got to put in that work and, you know, actually follow everything that they're teaching you, too. Yeah, most definitely. And, and the same thing, when you're putting that money up towards that, I always, uh, you know, somebody said this and it really stuck with me, like, a lot of times the free route ain't the best route for people. Um, you know, most times when people pay, they pay attention. And when you actually got some skin in the game, it's kind of the same way as when you go to a lender. You know, they're going to tell you, like, hey, you're you going to have to put, put some money down. It's going to be a down payment to this, whether it's 20% or whatever. So, and I, they do that because they want you to have some type of skin in the game so you can actually, you know, perform. And so that's why I always say you definitely want to take that. <clears throat> you don't want to take, you know, take that into consideration. Like, don't just be out here thinking everything going to be a quick flip. Like, you can pay somebody 10000 or whatever. I'm just using 10000 as a rough number. Like, whatever they're charging for their mentorship, and you're just going to be a millionaire tomorrow. Like, you still got to go put in the work. They're not there to do the work for you. They're there to show you how to do it and teach you how to fish so that you can go out there and make your own. I mean, eventually, maybe you can help somebody else out, but you know that's just a byproduct of it. at the at the forefront. Of everything is it, it teaches you how to put you in a position to be successful. Absolutely. But I want to get to this hard money lending. 
Cause like I said, yeah. I don't know nobody. I I, don't, I ain't talking to nobody that do this. So can you just kind of break down to everybody what you know the hard money lending scene, like what that is and what it's like what it entails? Because I know everybody don't don't a lot of people don't really know what that is. Yep. So basically, hard money is an alternative, excuse me, an alternative to traditional invest. I mean, to traditional mortgage uh, lending. So traditional mortgages they focus on owner occupied. So if someone that wants to live in there, it's their personal house that you would contact. A, a, they call it a residential mortgage broker or a mortgage lender. And where's the hard money? We're strictly investor focused. So if you're going to live in the property, I'm not the guy to contact. You know what I mean? Only for real estate investment purposes. So whether it's for one to four units, five plus units, mixed use, uh, commercial, some some uh, other commercial like warehouses and stuff, we're able to fund. But you know, pretty much any investment um, related property, we're, we're, I'm the guy to call. Okay. Now. How, do, how is this a, a business per se? Like, how do you make money off of doing this? Where do you get the money to fund deals? Like, uh, I got a whole bunch of, like, all right, we'll just start off like, how, how does people, how do you, how can somebody, I guess we'll start off with the basics. How can somebody even get started and become a hard money lender? Wow. I mean, that's a great question because like you said, I mean, you don't, you never interviewed anybody. You may not even know anybody that's a hard money lender. That's because there's no official school or training to get involved in this industry. It's not like you can't take mortgage broker classes like it is for traditional lending. You can't take real estate classes like it is to be a real estate agent. Up until this point, to get involved, you had to know somebody that was already in it. And then you had to work side by side with them, you know, basically to, to learn it. If not, you had to try by trial and error, which can really be um, super expensive. Now, somebody introduced me to this industry, but they didn't really train me on the industry. He taught me how to submit deals to his company. You know what I mean? I, honestly, and I no lie, once I got finished, I, I submitted about 50 deals to him that year and none of them closed. You know what I mean? So as, as a result, I'm like, listen, I paid this money. I'm in this business. I, if I depend on this guy, obviously it's not going to be successful. So I had to go and find other resources and, you know, learn it, you know, by trial and error myself. I started okay. out as a broker, you know, yeah, go ahead. So then what, so what's the pro? so what's the, I guess what's the process, like what does it entail then to actually like do the hard money lending and do I need like, you know, I need to be sitting on some stacks of money, like what, what, what goes into it? All right. So it's, Two, it's a two-part question to that. So is hard money brokers, which doesn't require any money to get involved or really to be successful. That's really more or less relationship-based. And that's how I got involved. You know, when I got involved, I didn't have a ton of money. Um, I definitely didn't have millions of dollars to lend myself, you know what I mean? But um, I feel, like I said, I found the resources. I found, so as a hard money broker, you just have to find the capital sources, which are, uh, they're just bigger, they're just big direct lenders, you know what I mean? Like big time institutions like you might have heard of out there, um, maybe Lending Home, Lima One, stuff like that. You get a relationship with them and now Flip Funding, you know, which is my company, okay? So we're a direct lender, you know, you just go visit their website. A lot of times they have a broker uh, uh, tab, you click that and you can apply to be a broker and you know, you're on your way, but they don't show you how to be successful. And if, you know, if you submit too many bad loans, then that lender is not going to work with you because you'll be a, a waste of time at that point. So it's, it's good to get educated on it uh, if one and if you can. Okay. I'm glad you said that. Like, so what, like you said, if you submit a bad loan, like, what does that like look like? What does that mean? That means like if you submit incomplete loan packages you know, or something, that, um, if you're constantly calling a lender, if you're not reading the, the, the guidelines yourself and actually understanding that program so that you're submitting qualified deals, you know what I mean? Then you're going to like, that's like somebody keep, let's say you're lending. I can't, I'm like, all right, Ali, I'm, I'm ready to go. I got a hundred deals ready. You know what I mean? But all of them incomplete. You're wasting your valuable time reviewing my packages and you're not making any money. So, I mean, that doesn't make sense from a business perspective. So anybody's going to get fed up and be like, all right, Ali, you know what I mean? But we, we, we've given this a try, you know what I mean? Um, we got to terminate this relationship because it's just not productive for me, you know what I mean? I suggest you go and work on your craft and come back once, you know, you're 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 ready and able to, you know, execute. Um, okay. So that's really what that is, yeah. Okay, now, uh, 
Uh, oh man, I'm trying to figure out how to word this question. Now, where do you make money, right? Because this is still a business at the end of the day. So can you explain to everybody like how you make money doing what you do with this? Yeah, so like I said, I started out as a broker and you know I've been doing this since 2013, 2014. Now 2022, I've been direct lending for the past couple of years. So the direct lending part means I'm either lending my money or money from a fund, money that I've raised from private investors and stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily mean that you know, I'm, you know, I'm banked up lending all of my money to every loan that come. You know, last year we did 75 million in loans. I damn sure I had 75 million dollars. So, you know. Uh, oh, 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 you did 75, you loaned out 75 mil? Absolutely, absolutely, bro. Yeah. Hey, but I'm gonna tell you my model though. So um, that's why, I'm, so it's, your question is great, but I'm trying to have people get a better understanding of everything. So, all right, let's say, you started, or anybody watching this started. What was the question again? I'm sorry, Dad. Well, tell, well, basically, how you make money from this, like. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, all right. I'll get into me, but let's say it's you or anybody mm-hmm. else that's watching this. The best, the best, and most safest way to get involved is as, as is as a broker, because as a broker, you're not using your capital. So, if somebody defaults, what are you losing? If they don't make that payment, what are you losing? You know what I mean? You as the broker, because you get instant gratification as a hard money broker. You don't have to wait until the project is complete. You don't have to wait until the, uh, you find a tenant or something like that to see your money. You get paid immediately at the settlement table. You know what I mean? And you're not using your money. So let's put it in perspective. Let's say um, you had a deal that was, you know, let's say you came to me with a deal and the loan amount was $100,000. Now I'm a hard money broker. I have this lender who's gonna charge, let's say, I know they're gonna charge me two points, but you know, I wanna be, now I can be competitive, it's two things now, you know what I mean? So you can be the, try to be competitive and only charge 1%, you know, and that'll equate 1% of a 100,000 is a thousand dollars. So you can make a thousand dollars on that deal. But you know, some people charge two points per deal. So a point is equal to a percentage, like 1%. So let's say one point is 1%. I say two points, that's 2%. So let's say on that same $100,000, I decided to charge two points as a hard money broker. That means that on that transaction at closing, you'll make $2,000 off of that transaction. Now, the average loan is closing in about a week and a half or two weeks. And you know you may work on a file, honestly, if somebody has the right, if you got the right setup, you yourself might work on a file for a combined four hours maybe. You know what I mean? And, you know, you, you done made that money. So the goal is to obviously get as many, you know, the closings as you can, because that one deal can accumulate. Let's say you did five. That's, that's enough. That's anywhere from five to $10,000 that week. Okay. So like, what's the average percentage somebody, so like 1% would be like, or one, what's the average percentage somebody charging based off their lending? Well, like I said, to be competitive, you know, I would recommend 1% because, you know, you, you be greedy. If you're greedy, you're going to lose out, you know what I mean? Because people shop around just like everything else. They want to see who's the most competitive. Now, if you can add value, if you can express you know, the value that you add, if they can see the value that, they, that you add to their business in a certain way, then they may be willing to pay more. Like if you provide consultant services, if you're not just being a lender and just funding deals, let's say you, you will offer services to first time investors. Like we were saying, you know, I, I see a lot of people, they don't get help. They try to do it on their own. So we may provide consultant services because we want to make sure that they win. We don't want to just, you know, see them fail because we want it to, the, the, the transaction to be a success so they can come back and we build that relationship. So, you know, we'll guide them if we see that they need some some help along the way. And, you know, if you do that, then you can offer, you know, get get higher uh, fees for your, okay. for your service. All right, this is like the direct, like you said, this is direct lending? Yeah, well, either. You can do that either, if it's broker okay. or direct. Yeah. Okay. Because, again, either, because as a lender, you're more than a lender. You're a consultant because everybody coming to you, you're the expert for the loans. So what we do as lenders, you submit, let's say, Ali, you submit a deal to me. I'm going to analyze that. And then based on, I'm going to ask you, you know, what your goals are. Because I only can serve as you if I understand exactly what you're trying to accomplish. You know what I mean? If not, 
if I don't ask you that, then what am I doing here? You know, how do I know that's what's best for you? So I'll ask you, you know, what's what's your goals? What are you trying to accomplish with this project? Or what's your vision for your entire real estate investment business? So then based on your response and in the deal, I'll look at my programs and determine what's the best solution to help make that happen. You know what I mean? So I'll choose that program, we'll price it, give you the term sheet, and if everything looks good to you, we get started from there. Okay. So I come to you, right? I got a property. I want to, you know, get hundred K. Yeah. How does that go? Or do, do I, what do I do? I give you like a down payment. Like what does, what does that work? What does that look like? What does that deal look like? Right. Yeah. So again, it depends on the type of deal, but let's say this is a fix and flip. So let's say this property, you're buying it for a hundred thousand, it's a hundred thousand to fix it up. And the ARV or the after repair value is 300,000. Right. Um, now, the leverage that we'll provide or the percentage that we'll provide of the loan depends on your experience. So let's say you're a first time borrower just starting out. We'll give you 80% of the purchase price and 100% of the rehab costs. So, you know, obviously that means that we'll give you 80,000 toward the purchase and you will have to put down that 20,000 and then, you know, or we'll still give you 100% of the rehab funds to complete okay. the Okay, and, and they're gonna be getting that periodically, you know, as they, throughout the renovation, gotcha, okay. And so, uh, so for that, because I'm thinking, so you don't have like, a, is it an interest rate on that or is it just the 1%? So you paying the interest rate, it'll be yeah. whatever y'all determine. Plus you got the points on top of that, which is going to go directly to the, to the, uh, the hard, the hard money or whatever you want to, the direct lender, hard money lender, whatever you work with. Yep, exactly. Okay. Yep. So All right. our interest rate, let's go on that, let's see that on that fix and flip. If you're a first time borrower with flip funding, which is my lending company, um, the highest interest rate that you'll ever see is a 10 and a half percent. You know, again, we try to keep it competitive because a lot of people, you know, you, you have improved yourself. So it, it, as a lender, someone with no experience is deemed risky. So, you know, you want to, you know, you yeah. got to charge the highest rate and fees and because, you know, you just got to, you know, you a lot of times they take they take the most time, they need the most nurturing and small. So they're, they're the biggest headaches, honestly, you know what I mean? The, the, the newer borrowers. So, you know, you charge more because they take more of your time and it's more of a risk. Um, okay. Yeah. Now, you say you did 75 mil a deal. Yeah. So how do I find, how do I be you, right? How do I go out here and find that type of money to put up where it ain't coming out of my own pocket? So, all right, so as a broker, an ex, well, well, most of those deals I did for myself, but like some of those deals, like the biggest deals of those, of that um, 75 million that I did, I did actually broker. So, because some of them was like a $10 million deal, some of them was like $20 million and stuff like that. So, um, for those, I, we don't do those in house, you know what I mean? So, uh, I don't even, you know, my fund. I'll tell you about my business model in a minute, but so yeah, we broker relationships again, you know, so I have something called hard money university, you know, that's coming out where, so I teach people how to be a hard money, get it, you know, launch their own hard money brokerage and stuff. And then that course I teach you, I, I introduce you to the lending sources that I have used in my business in the past, you know, and um, I teach you everything, you know, to do exactly what I've learned over the course of these last, you know, um, years, last eight years and uh, while I was developing my business. Okay, so uh, I get what is your business like? What does your business model look like? So, just like whatever you want to, how much you want to expose? Because I'm, I'm curious now. Like I'm trying to put all this stuff together myself. Like, this is interesting. So, all right, like I told you, I started from a broker, right? And then you know the issue was as I was growing, my it wasn't an issue, but you know the issue for flip funding was. We started out good, you know what I mean? Our brokers, our borrowers were happy, but as we started to grow, you know, our borrowers were growing and they wanted to be compensated for their loyalty. Now, the thing about being a broker is that you don't have maximum flexibility and as far as like determining the rates and fees and stuff like that, you kind of you kind of just got to take whatever the lender charges and, you know, you relay that to the borrower and so forth. So as a broker, I didn't have the flexibility to offer lower rates to my, my, my clients. And so they started to go elsewhere, you know what I mean? So I had to do something about that. And then, you know, as you progress from a broker, the next step is like a correspondent or a table funding. Whereas though you still get money from third parties, but on the loan documents, it, it has Ali's funding or something like that. So you appear as a direct lender, 
Um, and it's actually, it's, it's a great thing because on the paper, your pair is a direct lender. So meaning your borrower can't try to circumvent you and go directly to the lender that you were working with if they work directly gotcha. with real direct. So you retain your business and you get a little bit more flexibility that way. Um, but, you know, then I, I, I can grow my business even more and I wanted complete control. I was tired of depending on third parties um, and being on their timeline because if something goes wrong, that borrower only knows you. Now, they don't know who's on the back end that you're dealing with, that's nothing that. And they don't even care because they trust Ali. They don't care who have Joe Schmoes on the back end, they don't want to hear it. So I got tired of taking the heat for other people's mistakes and stuff like that. So I said the only way to um you know to eliminate that is to become a direct lender. So what I did by this time, you know, I started making some money. So I had some money myself. But I obviously don't have enough money. Like I said, I don't have 75 million. You know what I mean? I don't have anywhere near that. But um, so a solution, my business model, I, this is what we do. So some deals I fund myself, you know, but if we have a ton of deals that week, I can't fund all my deals. So I do have some private lenders that I raise money from and they participate in loans or fund whole loans for me. And what we do is we sell it off to third party investors. Every week we sell the loans off to third party investors or institutions. And what they're doing is they're packaging the loans up they call it the aggregator. So they, they package the loans up and they sell them to Wall Street as securities. What? Oh, yeah. man, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Now, since we sell the loans every week, since we sell them the loans every week, we get them whatever we put out for those loans that week, we get it right back that next week. So I'm recycling the money, I'm from lending and I'm recycling the capital. So I don't need to have a huge fund in order to be a direct lender and service my clients. Are you teach people how to do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just started again, you know what I mean? It's nowhere to really learn this stuff, man. Like, so I saw opportunity, I think, because, honestly, because- Oh, that's why I'm asking, cause this sounds crazy, bro. Like I I never heard nobody go into the details of it. So I said, I ain't gonna get in. I, I, I do enough stuff. I mean, that's why I hate, like, people start hearing stuff like this, it sound like a, a nice little lick, God dang. Listen, man, I'm killing it right now. Honestly, I'm killing it. You know what I mean? Like, and it, it's not many, you know what I mean? It's not many minorities in this business at all. You know what I mean? Especially black people. Now, you might see a lot of Spanish people, but they're majority in like Florida or California. Other than that, you don't see many Spanish people. You don't see many black people or minorities in this industry at all. You know what I mean? Like I was telling you, we're like dinosaurs. So I'm probably one of the only, you know, in my journey as a hard money lender, I've only, no lie, ran across, I think maybe one or two other black direct lenders. You know what I mean? Seriously. And I've been in this business for seven, well, eight years now. Yeah. Shit, that's crazy. I'm over here sitting here thinking about trying to get in. Let me stop, man. <laughs> but no, nah, that's that's definitely crazy. And so you out here, you getting started with a program uh, so you can teach other people how to get in the game, right? Yes, sir. Yep. So launched something called Hard Money University, you know, and again, we teach people, you know, specifically targeting minorities, you know, I'll accept anybody, we ain't discriminating, but, you know, we're the ones that's kind of left out of these opportunities, so I feel like, you know, I need to open it up to our people so they could learn and take advantage of, you know, what's been, people been benefiting from for generations now. Okay, for sure, well. Cool, bro, I ain't gonna lie, I feel like I cracked the code with this one. Nah, for sure, and so since you, since you feel that way, go ahead and kind of break down, like, what this, what like your course or program, like what it entails and like a little bit of details about it that uh that people can expect if they uh you know rock with you. Yep. So like I told you, man, it, this industry can be brutal. It, it definitely, you know, I've been through it. I've been through the ringer just because I didn't have anybody to show hold my hand and show me, you know what I mean, what exactly to do. You know, I had somebody who I said he mentored me, but he basically introduced me to the business. He didn't show me how to be successful in the business. You know, he didn't show me what he, anything that he personally did. So I've been through that, you know what I mean? I know what this struggle is like. I spent, the, I spent six figures, I swear, you know, fig, figuring this business out, you know what I mean? And luckily I'm still sure. here. I, I was ready to hang it up plenty of times. It, it got tough, but you know, I don't want, y'all, I don't want anybody else to go through that. So I'm literally, and I'm genuinely telling you this, I'm gonna give you everything. Anything I know, I'm literally gonna lay, out, lay it all out on the table. Like, I don't care. Y'all not, because y'all not competitioning me. I have, 
is it? I mean, everybody has their their herd. You know what I mean? Like, it's enough money out here for everybody. So, you know, I'm gonna teach everything that from how I find deals, how you manage the leads, how you get it to how you get them to convert. Like, so first, I want to show you how to generate leads. You know, what to say to them, how to get them to convert, how to manage those uh, leads and nurture that relationship so that not only do you get that loan, but they have a good experience and they come back. You know what I mean? Like that's the key because like there's a lot of ways to generate leads. You know, social media is popular. But that's not one of the one of the ways that I've grew my business. Like social media can shut down today or tomorrow and I won't lose any sleep because my business isn't isn't based off of social media. It's, it's a great tool. Now, I'm, I'm gonna tap into it now, you know, but I, my, I built my business through st uh, strategic relationships. So like with partnering with wholesalers or, you know, because their, their target audience is our target audience. As a wholesaler, you know, like they, they focus on cash buyers and cash buyers are essentially uh, real estate investors because everybody's not paying for cash. I mean, paying cash. So we partner with wholesalers. We're able to add value to their business because, you know, if they are already providing a property for the person, that person more than likely is going to need funding. So if they, uh, they don't have an option or if they have an option, but we can be more competitive, that makes that wholesaler look, look better. And they getting paid off of that property sale and we give them uh, money from the, uh, from the loan. So they getting paid twice off of each deal. You know what I mean? Same thing for like investor friendly real estate agents. Their, their target audience is real estate investors. That's what they specialize. In. They all need financing. So I tell them, you know, like Harmony University is a no brainer for anybody that's currently in or aligned with the real estate industry. Because if you already have clients and they already like your service, why not provide the financing too? I mean, it could be a one stop shop because if you let them go somewhere else, you risk losing them. And that person may not even provide you know the, uh, as good as a good as, as good of a service as you do. So you know why not keep them in the house? And then you know you know you can add, increase your bottom line without doing much extra work. Okay. No, that. Hey man, I ain't never seen you one of the first people I've seen talk about this. So you, it's gonna be different. So you probably gonna hit this mug hard. Everybody I've seen where they got something that I've never seen online. I don't seen everything online for the most part, but when you see something new like this, uh, especially since the real estate, you know, real estate already one of the hottest things that everybody trying to get into. So this is just a different niche of real estate that I don't see a lot of people talk about. So you definitely gonna, I'm pretty sure you're gonna kill it, bro. And hey, man, just, you know, whenever that's going right now, or when is it uh, getting started? So I'm throwing a free webinar, you know, everybody does free webinars, but I'm throwing a free webinar on March 1st at seven o'clock uh, Eastern Standard. You know what I mean? If you're watching this, definitely join. It, it's a free webinar, so it can't hurt you. But, I, you know, like Ali's saying, this is some exclusive content. Before, up until now, it was like a secret. You know, nobody, people have used it, but nobody, even people that use it, they still don't really get a full understanding of the hard money industry. So, you know, I'm gonna expose it all. I'm gonna give you all the game in this webinar and let you come to the conclusion to whether or not you think this is beneficial for you, your business, or, you know, or, or whatever. Okay, so, man, I just wanna thank you for coming on. I do another segment, man. This is my last segment. I do a talk to the culture segment. I run off five questions, man. Just answer the best your abilities, man. Nothing too crazy. First question. What does success look like to you? Man, success to me looks like peace of mind, um, comfortability, you know, happy, happy family, you know what I mean? Um, a peace of mind, uh, a little bit of money because we know that does, you know, make things uh, complete, you know, not necessarily complete, but it does help you to be comfortable and give you that peace of mind. So um, as long as my family's straight, I got peace of mind and um, we making some money. I, I, I can't ask for much more. That's success to me, honestly. Sure. Now I always get one book recommendation for everybody. One book recommendation. So I'm going to say something, say something um, that's actually a bit different. Um, then I, a lot of people say off the, the same books and stuff like that. A book that helped me out was uh, Ultimate Mind Control, you know, by uh, Dr. Ha Ha Lung. You know, it's just um, that. And um, I'm sorry, I got my, I got one up here right now that I actually love. Uh, I don't see. I can't think of the title right. It's been a while, but um, yeah. So the uh, ultimate mind control. You know, I like that a lot. It's helped helped me shape my mindset. You know, mindset is key 
to success, you know? So, um, yeah, look into that if you get a chance. Okay, sure. Now, we tailor to the Black community on this podcast, man. So I always ask everybody, what do you think is one thing the Black community needs to improve on? Loving ourselves, man. Loving ourselves, you know, because we hate each other, man. You know, like, you you know, we act, we, we all front. You know, we all front on social media. We act like, you know, we all trying to stick together. We want to support each other, this and that. But actions show differently. You know what I mean? And I like one thing that you said, you know, that you base your podcast on people just being genuine, being who they are and stuff like that. You're not playing this political social media game. Like, you know, I feel like a lot of people are playing, especially with social media going on. We we, we, a lot of we doing things for the wrong reasons, you know what I mean? Like we, we doing it for the show. It's not going, it's not long term. That's not going to help anybody. So, um, we got to love ourselves. Really try to support and help each other instead of like judging and stuff like that. Um, and 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 get your mindset right again. Going back to mindset because like again, if you're going to be, don't be out here trying to stunt for social media because at the end of the day, they don't give a damn about you for real for real. You know what I mean? And then if you, when you go broke, they're going to laugh and say, oh, he was dumb for doing all this and that. Nobody asked him, or he or she was dumb for doing it. Nobody told him to do this and that. You know what I mean? They're just going to be looking, laughing at you then. So, I mean, you got to like, remember your purpose. Remember your purpose and what you're doing things for. You know what I mean? Is that I would hope that it's not for, you know, to impress you know, other people. I, I'll just say that. Okay, no, nah, for sure. You, you just hit on something deep, man. I don't want to get no rant, so I just let you go. But no, nah, I, I think about that probably every other episode at this point. So I ain't, I'm gonna let somebody else beat the dead horse. But <laughs> I'll, my next question is, what's next for you? Because I like to ask people this, so when they come back on, you know, year from now, or whenever we can just look back and be like, he said he was gonna do this, and that's what it is. So um, of course, I got this Hard Money University thing launching. That's the official launch, the first class is going to be the second week of March. So, you know, look forward to that. Again, like, like you said, Ali, I plan on this thing being huge, man. I want my name to be synonymous with hard money. Um, so that's what's going to happen. But outside of that, you know, I just bought 34 acres in North Carolina. Um, and I'm turning that into a campground, like a campground slash glamp brown. We, you know, we're going to cater, again, to black people because, uh, you know, you have a ton of, you know, white-owned ones out there, but you don't see many that are catered towards us. And I don't want to... I think we got to get back. They, you know, a lot of us are scared of the outdoors, man. You know what I mean? And that's for what well, I said. We're scared of the outdoors, but it's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful thing. Like, my wife had to actually turn me on to the outdoors. I'm in the hiking, you know, the woods and just nature now. And, like, it's really refreshing. Like, and it does something to me. Now. So I want everybody to experience that. So um, the name didn't uh, – I didn't figure out the name yet, but look forward to that. If you have IG, tune into my IG. You know, you'll see my updates on that. So it's ride underscore hard money. Okay. Well, that was the last question, man. i just like to, you know, anybody trying to get a hold of you, trying to reach you. I mean, I know you say you ain't too big on social media, but you, you slowly, you know, coming over to this side. How can they get a hold of you? Where can they find you at? So as of the last couple of months, because I have this course coming up, honestly, you know, I've been more active on social media. Uh, I'm more of a behind the scenes type of guy. I really, like, I would, uh, probably, probably a couple of months ago, I would have been busting sweats and everything in front of this, and for this interview and everything, just overthinking it, you know what I mean? But I've been facing my fears, doing videos, like three, at least three times a week to try to, you know, overcome that. And um, so I'm saying all that to say, I'm a little more active on social media now. Um, again, you can find me, Rod, R-O-D underscore hard money. Um, that's on uh, everything. And um, my website, flipfunding.com. And uh, yeah, y'all. All right, and y'all already know, man, I have all that information in the show notes. Man, I just want to thank you again for coming through, man. Appreciate you. And, and, and one thing I got to say, man, this is what it, you know, we always talk about relationships and, you know, getting in the room, networking, meeting people. And I met you through Annalisa. So uh, she's a previous guest, friend of the show. And, and, it, and it's crazy because... All this stuff that all these link uh, connections and stuff, and like you was even mentioning with hard money, it's all relationship based. You can go way further with a crazy network than you can just, you know, knowing a whole bunch of stuff of what you think is a whole bunch of stuff. And and I say that person, I'm a testament to that because you know this year, <clears throat> this past year, I started really getting out meeting people, and that's when a lot of doors start opening for me. So I just tell everybody, don't be afraid to reach out to somebody. 
when you reach out to somebody, you know, have some value to add. Like I always say, don't just come with your hand out because it's nothing, there's no mutual, that's not a relationship. You know, you're parasitic at that point, you're a leech. But, you know, when you reach out to people, have something to provide them value, man. And they're going to, uh, you know, if it don't work out with them, cool, go to the next person. And you'll find some people, you'll start finding your circle of people, your tribe of people that you can lean on and they can lean on you. So that's all I'm saying, man. Once again, bro, I appreciate you for coming on, man. Definitely appreciate you for coming on, man. So mm -hmm. we're going to keep it touch, Ali. Thank you for having me. Thanks, for everybody, for coming through and uh, checking me out. And, um, you know, feel free to reach out anytime. And we'll definitely keep in contact, for sure. For sure, for um, sure, for sure, man. I could probably plug in with a few people. I know I should. Probably should. I'm thinking about people right now I might be able to link you with. But um, definitely, like y'all know, man, y'all go like, comment, subscribe here on the YouTube Leave some reviews, man. I see all these people that listen in, man. Leave some reviews, man. If y'all really rock with the content, it helps with the algorithm. I don't ever think to say that in the beginning, but I'm going to work on it. But y'all already know, man, like we say every episode, what good is success? If everyone around you is still struggling, man, each one reach one, each one teach one. This is another episode of What for the Culture, and we are out.